Okay, blood supply intracranial. So this is going to be called the circle of Willis. I'll show you the circle part, but it's just the vertebral, uh, sorry, the uh, vascular supply of the brain. So there are going to be two, um, two sources of, of arterial supply to the brain. You're going to have your, your internal carotid. And I'm going to draw two of them. You're going to have your internal carotid. And you're going to have your vertebral basilar. The vertebral basilar is going to be the vertebral arteries that come up through those transverse foramen and the cervical vertebra and enter into the skull uh, that way. And the internal carotid is going to enter through the carotid canal, uh, a little more anterior in the base of the, the skull, and enter that way. And then you're going to have the middle cerebral artery. Middle cerebral artery. Now that's going to be the main uh, branch off the internal carotid as it enters the skull. You're going to have another branch that's going to be the anterior cerebral artery. Anterior cerebral artery. And I'll, I'll show you where these are on a brain in a moment. And then these two are going to be connected by an anterior communicating artery. Anterior communicating artery. Right? The um, internal carotid then will give off a posterior communicating artery, which will head toward uh, the, the rear of the brain. And you're going to have a posterior cerebral artery. So you have an anterior and a posterior and a middle cerebral artery. They're going to, they're going to supply the lobes of the cerebrum. A couple other uh, little ones. There's going to be an ophthalmic artery and a choroidal artery here. Choroidal artery that's going to help with the, uh, the, the choroid plexus, the ventricular system, and the ophthalmic artery here. Then there's a few uh, perforating arteries in here. Uh, don't worry about those yet. The two um, posterior uh, communicating arteries, uh, bring it back here to the uh, posterior cerebral artery. The vertebral basilar system is going to bring two vertebral arteries into um, the skull, and they're going to give off a little branch right away to the front. They're going to join and head down. That's your anterior spinal artery. We'll do spinal blood flow, um, blood supply on another video. And they're going to give off um, uh, another significant branch right there. Then they're going to join in the center and form a really thick artery called the basilar artery. Basilar artery. And the basilar artery, right after it kind of joins, uh, um, is converging from the vertebral arteries. It's going to give off some branches like that. These two right here, these two are going to supply the inferior portion of the cerebellum. One's going to supply the anterior portion of that bottom half and one will supply the, the, the posterior portion of the bottom half. So they're going to be known as the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. The basilar artery is going to be on the surface of the pons so it's going to give off a bunch of little pontine arteries. And then as you get uh, closer to uh, anastomosing with the internal carotid uh, portion of the circular willis, you're going to give off another big branch from the basilar artery that's going to be the superior uh, cerebellar artery. And then the posterior communicator will just continue up with the um, posterior uh, cerebral artery. So the circle of Willis comes from this part here that sort of circles around uh, this anastomotic um, process. That looks like a lot. Look at that for a minute. Rewind that if you have to and kind of doodle that out. And I'm going to draw uh, a lateral view of a brain and kind of show you where these arteries uh, belong on a brain that helps make more sense of it. So the easiest way to think of that circle of Willis is you're looking at the uh, anterior, inferior, or ventral surface of a brain or someone that's looking up like this and you're looking straight in to their brain in this direction. All right. So we'll draw a brain. So you got two sources. Your uh, vertebral arteries are going to enter the skull. They're going to come up one side on the, the left and one on the right 
and they're going to give rise to that anterior spinal artery that's going to head back out along the anterior surface of the, the spine. So these are your, ver these are your uh, vertebral arteries. Right? The vertebral arteries are going to join together and run up the center line on the surface of the pons That's and give off all those little pontine arteries. That's your basilar artery. Okay. Those are your little pontine arteries. Okay. Now, just before, uh, when you're still kind of on the medulla oblongata, your vertebral artery is going to um, pass an artery around the brain stem to supply this <clears throat> inferior half of the cerebellum, the posterior aspect of that. So that's your posterior inferior cerebellar artery. <clears throat> Off the junction of the vertebrals to the basilar, there's going to be another artery that's going to supply the inferior half of the cerebellum, but the anterior portion of that, so that's going to be your anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now up here where your basilar arteries start to run onto the midbrain, you're going to give off a branch that's going to supply the top half of the cerebellum. That will be your superior cerebellar artery. Okay. And then you're going to continue up with uh, communicating with the internal carotid system, which had entered here in the skull through the carotid canal. Carotid canals right and left. And as it goes, this part will be deep to what we can see on the lateral hemisphere. You'll have a middle cerebral artery, which will come through that lateral fissure and supply the lateral aspect of the hemisphere. You'll have off the internal carotid, the anterior cerebral artery, and then that'd be joined to the other side by the anterior communicating artery. Don't forget that. And then um, for this juncture here, you have your ophthalmics and your choroidals and, and some of your deep perforating uh, arteries. And then the uh, internal carotid from this point will send a posterior communicating artery right to anastomose with the projection from the basilar artery, and it'll give off the posterior cerebral artery, which will uh, come back here and supply the occipital lobe and such. So that's kind of what the circulus willis would look circular willis would look like from a lateral view, sort of superimposed over the brainstem, the medulla oblongata, the pons, midbrain, and then up into the, the cerebrum. All right? So we lay that circle of willis out again. Start with two little circles from your for your internal carotids. You have your middle cerebral artery, your anterior cerebral artery, your posterior communicating, and your posterior cerebral artery. anterior communicating artery, joining the two anterior cerebral arteries together. And then after that, you've got the superior cerebellar, the basilar artery, with the little pontine arteries coming off. Off the uh, inferior aspect of the basilar, you get your anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Then you get your split for your vertebral arteries, and you get your posterior inferior cerebral cerebellar artery, and then off the end, you get your anterior spinal artery uh, from the junction of your right and left vertebral artery. So your basic circle of Willis, um, ophthalmic choroidal artery, there's some deep perforating arteries here, uh, but those are the main branches and the main blood supply uh, intracranially. So we'll do another video on the venous drainage of the inside of the skull and the brain uh, in the next video.